You're welcome to Immaculate Math YouTube channel where I'm devoted in building students with zero tolerance for the fear of mathematics. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the test question done on the 18th of February 2021 on the Unilag LMS portal. So for all year one students that will be writing their tests soon, this video will serve as a means of preparation even if you don't know where to even start from. So if you are new here, you're welcome. All I need you to do is to press the subscribe button. Of course, it is free and also on the notification icon so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video like this. As a rule of thumb, don't just sit down watching, get your pen and paper, pause the video to see whether you can attempt the question yourself, and I pray that the Almighty God will grant you success. With all this, let's head over to our video for today. In this question it said, the second term of a geometric progression is 24 and the sum to infinity is 100, find the two possible values of the first term and their corresponding common ratio in form of a1 comma r1 and e2 comma r2 so the very first thing we might want to do in this question is for us to uh, interpret it correctly so they said in the question it said that the second term of the of a geometric progression is 24. now what if you ask yourself what is the end term of a geometric progression the end term of a geometric progression is given as a multiplied by r is to power n minus 1 where your a is your first term your r is your common ratio and your n is your number of terms Alright, so they said the second term of a geometric progression. So what is the second term? What will be the second term? That means the second term will be what? That is if I replace my n with 2. That means I'm going to have this to be a r raised to power 2 minus 1, which will give me what? A r. So they said from the question that the second term is 24. That means we have this to be 24. Alright, so they said another the for, question for that states that the sum to infinity is 100. Now, if you ask yourself, what is the sum to infinity of a geometric progression? The sum to infinity of a geometric progression is given as a over 1 minus r. Don't forget that your a is your first term and your r is your common ratio. Now, if we replace that, so they said the sum to infinity is 100. So that means if we equate that to 100, so let's equate it to 100. So that means we have this our, as our equation 1 and this one as our equation 2. So let me try to write the two equations out so that we can solve them directly. So that means we are going to have our a r to be equals to 24 and we have a over 1 minus r to be equals to 100 so if i cross multiply this equation directly so what am i going to have i'm going to have this to be what i'm going to have this to be a r multiplied by 100 to be equals to 24 uh, multiplied by 1 a over what 1 minus r of course it is clear that a will cancel a Alright, so that means if I cross multiply again, that means I'm going to have this to be what? I'm going to have this to be um, R multiplied by 1 minus R, right? To be equal to what? 24 divided by 100. Okay, directly from here, I can divide both sides by 100. Alright, so that means 4 will divide 24, that's 6 times, then 4 will divide 100, that's what? 25 times. Okay, so again, if I cross multiply, that means I'm going to have. 25 r minus 25 r square why because r multiplied by r will give me r then uh, r multiplied by y will give me r then times 25 will give me 25 r r multiplied by minus r will give me minus r square multiply by it by 25 that will give me what minus 25 r square to be equal to what six All right so if i collect like times that is i want to make this uh, coefficient of r square to be positive that is if i bring it to this side that means i'm going to have this to be what uh, 25 r square all right so if i bring this to the other side i'm going to have this to be what minus 25 r right then plus 6 to be equals to 0 right. good so that means if i factorize this quadratic equation that means i'm going to have this to be 20 this is uh 5 r you can solve it directly with your quadratic formula and we can also solve this directly using what the factorization method but here i'm going to stay with my factorization method so that means i can write this as 5r then 5r so then this will be minus 2 and this will be what minus 3 okay so meaning that 5r multiplied by 5r will give me what 25r square and minus 2 multiplied by minus 3 will give me plus 6 and if i multiply 5r multiplied by um minus 3 will give me minus 75 then minus 15 minus 15r then minus 10r will give, that will give me what minus 25r so that means this factorization is correct so to be equal to zero meaning that my r would be what my r would be 2 over 5 or 3 over 5 good so don't forget that uh, our 
a is what our a from your equation one don't forget that your a is what your a r is what 24 right so that means that what my a will be 24 divided by what r so when my when my r is when my r is 2 over 5 so what's my a my a is what 24 multiplied by what 5 over 2 so that means this this is what uh this is 12 12 times 5 will give me 60 good so when my r when my r is now what 3 over 5 what's my a my a is 24 multiplied by 5 over 3 which is what which is uh three year one three year eight eight times five is give me what forty so if i want to write it in this form that means i'm going to have uh, my a which is 60 okay so okay that means i'm going to have 40 uh 60 comma 2 over 5 or i should have what 40 comma uh 3 over 5 Okay, so the correct option here is what? The correct option here is what? C. Let's move on to the next question. In this question, it said that if alpha and beta are the root of the equation uh, 2x squared plus 3x minus 7 to be equal to 0. So they ask us to find the value of alpha over beta plus what beta over what alpha. Okay. You might uh the very first thing that i want to come to your mind is for you to is for you to simplify this expression over here so let's let's do that okay so if we simplify this expression we have alpha beta so what's the same of beta and alpha of course it is just what alpha beta all right so if you find the lcm of course this divided by this will give us alpha beta divided by beta will give us alpha then multiplied by alpha will give us what alpha square then this one also this will also give us beta what beta square and you would have seen something like this before that anytime you have alpha square plus beta square all right according to the uh algebraic identity of of uh, of numbers you will have this to be what if i have alpha square plus beta square i will have this to be alpha plus beta all square minus 2 alpha beta and you will agree with me why do i think why do i say you will agree with me because if i expand alpha plus beta all square i'm going to have this to be alpha square plus beta square uh plus 2 alpha beta all right so meaning that for me to have this expression this alpha square plus beta square i can just easily bring 2 alpha beta to the other side that means i'm going to have alpha square plus beta square to be equal to alpha plus beta uh, all square minus two alpha beta you can see that it's very easy for me to uh, to derive so i'm not going to go into the, all this i just want to show you how we got uh, that expression so you can learn next time all right so meaning that we have this all divided by what all divided by alpha beta all right so you remember that uh from the concept of sum and products all right if you have a general equation of a quadratic equation that is if you have ax square uh plus bx plus c to be equal to zero so this is the general uh, form of a quadratic uh, equation okay we claim that the sum okay let's say alpha and beta are the root of this quadratic equation let's say alpha and beta that is if i substitute the value of alpha inside this equation to give me zero and it will, if i substitute the value of beta inside this equation to also give me zero so i claim that if i add this uh the sum of the roots together is going to give me what negative b all divided by a and if i take the product of the two roots together it's going to give me what c and what c multiply c divided by what c divided by a so having that uh known that concept so if i apply that concept here that means i'm going to have this to be so let me just directly uh get the value of alpha plus beta so that means i'm going to have this to be minus b so what's my minus b minus my, my b is what three right so if you compare this with the general form of a quadratic equation you will see that your a is what two your b is what three and your c is what minus seven all right so if i do that that means i'm going to have this to be what uh minus b that's what minus three all divided by two right my alpha beta will simply be what c divided by that's what minus seven or divided by what or divided by a okay so that means i'm going to have this to be um minus three minus three over two all square right minus two uh multiplied by what okay minus two multiplied by minus seven all divided by what so this should be two okay all divided by two right 
then uh, all divided by alpha beta that's what minus 7 over what 2 okay so that means I can have this to be what that means I'm going to have this to be 9 over 4 right minus what this should be plus this should be plus uh, of course this we cancel this one that means I'm going to have this to be what plus 7 all divided by what minus 7 over what 2 so I can just continue to simplify this guy here so if I simplify this one here of course what's the LCM of the numerator here the LCM of the numerator here is what 7 uh, 4 so that means I'm going to have this to be 9 plus uh, 7 times 4 is give me 28 right then all divided by what minus 7 over what 2 so of course 9 plus 28 will give me 37 that's what 37 37 all divided by what 37 all divided by 4 then I still have divided by division by divided by what minus 7 over 2 so I can easily write this as what 37 over what 4 multiplied by what multiplied by uh, minus 2 over 7 right so this will cancel this guy here so that means I'm going to have this to be minus 37 over what to have minus 37 over 14 so if you check the option options here you'll see that you see minus 27 over 4 12 over uh, 7 minus 37 over 4 and 27 over 4 so if I were you I would just I would just choose C because it's somewhat closer to the answer maybe when they are typing it they forgot to put a uh, one in front of here so instead of just not choosing any option you can just choose what C because it's very close to the answer so let's move on to the next um, next question so in this question they said that the seventh term find the seventh term of this sequence the seventh term of this sequence all right so what will be the seventh term of this sequence they've already given me the nth term to be what uh 2n plus 1 all divided by n square plus 1 right so that means the seventh term would be what 2 multiplied by 7 uh plus 1 all divided by 7 square plus 1 that means we are going to have this to be what 2 times 7 is 14 plus 1 that was got 15 all divided by 7 square is 49 plus 1 that's what 50 so 5 we go in 15 that's 30 times that is 5 we go in 50 that means what 10 times so the answer is what the answer is 3 over 10 which is what which is p so next question uh, in this question they said if x y and z are in geometric progression if x y and z are in geometric progression whose sum is 13 and their product is what minus 64 so they ask us to do what they ask us to find the average of this question is not actually complete so they ask us to find the average find the average of of x y and z all right so this here is the complete question so they said if x y and z are in geometric progression whose sum is 13 and their product is what minus 64 so they want us to find the average of x y and z okay so for us to even find the before we can even find the average of x y and z we need to know determine the value of what x y and z itself okay so i want you to uh follow me as i solve this question carefully now if three anytime you hear that three uh, numbers are in geometric progression so have it at the back of your mind that uh, the middle number all right will always be the equal will always be equal to the square root of the product of the first and third number okay it will always be uh, why will always be a, uh, the square root of the product of x and what x and z okay so I have that at the back of your mind so that means we can have this as uh, y square all right to be equal to what we can have this as y square to be equals to x z okay so let's have this as our equation equation one okay so and then i said the whole sum is what 13 so that means we have x plus y plus z all right to be equals to what 13 all right and then i said their product is what their product is 64 minus 64 so we have x y multiplied by z to be what minus 64 all right so we have these three equations so we have equation one equation two uh equation three so three equations we need to solve for what x y and z so if you look at from your equation one if i substitute uh y to be equal to x z in uh from equation one into equation three so what am i going to have i'm going to have this to be i'm going to have uh, i'm going to have this to be so if i represent you know i have x y 
I have x x z to be equal to y square. So if I replace that here, so that means this will be what. So from equation three, so let me use my let me use my blue pen. So from three, from three, from equation three, right? So that means I'm going to have um. So this is x multiplied by z. That means I'm going to have y multiplied by y. That is if I replace uh y square to be equal to x z. Okay, if I replace x multiplied by x z, okay, in equation three with y square, that means I'm going to have this to be uh y square multiplied by what another y to be equal to what minus sixty four, right? So that means I'm going to have this to be uh y cube to be equal to what minus sixty four, right? So if I take the cube root of if I take the cube root of both side, that means that what that means that what my y would be what minus what minus four. Okay, so my y is what minus four. So if I replace y with minus four in this in equation two, so re uh, replace y with what minus four in equation two. So what am I going to have? So if I replace y with minus four, that means I'm going to have um um x z x plus z to be equal to what thirteen. Then if I take uh don't forget that your y is minus four. That means if I uh, if I take it to the other side here, that means I'm going to have 13 plus 4, which is still the same thing as what? That means I have x plus z to be equal to what? 17, right? So, and also, I also have xz, okay? My xz to be equal to what? To be equal to y square, which is what? Minus 4 square, which is what? 16, all right? So, meaning here that I have my x plus z to be equal to 17, I also have the product to be equal to what? To be equal to 16. So what does this actually looks like to you? You can actually go uh, by dividing both sides by x and, you know, substituting it here and making x of the formula. You can also do that. Let's even try to do that. If we try to divide both sides by um, by x here, so divide both sides by x, that means my what? My z, that means my z is what? My z is 16. All divided by x so if I replace z with x here in this uh, first equation let me call this equation star so that means I'm going to have this to be what that means I'm going to have um, x plus what 16 all divided by x to be equal to what 17 and here that means I'm going to have if I cross multiply that is if I multiply each of the uh, each of this each of these terms by x that means I'm going to have this to be what x square right plus what 16 right then to be equal to 17 x do you know why you are not having x here because i've already multiplied each, each of this equation by what by x so i multiply this by x i multiply this by what x and i also multiply this by what x so that means the x here we cancel the x here that means i have this to be what 16 right so now from here you can easily see that this is what x square minus 17 x plus what 16 to be equal to zero and it is very easy for you to see that x is what uh you have what x if i factorize this i'm going to have x minus um i'm going to have x minus 16 right then i'm going to have x minus 1 to be equal to zero that means x is equal to what 16 or what or one so if I do it for the other way around, that means I'm going to have um I'm going to have z to also be what to also be one or what or sixteen. Okay. So if your uh x is is seventeen, if your x is seventeen, right? So what will be my z if your x is seventeen? Okay. So if if my x is one, if my x is one, my z will be what sixteen. All right. So if my x is 16, all right. If my x is 16, that means my z will be what? My z will be one. So you can see it here. So that means uh, we can just pick one of them. That means that means we can pick our x to be what? 16. We can pick our x to be 16. We can pick our z to be what? One. And now we cannot pick our y to be what? Minus four. All right. So if I take the average of these three numbers, that is the average is plus the mean another word for average is what the mean so if i find the mean of this number so what am i going to have i'm going to have 16 minus 4 plus 1 all right divided by what 3 so that means i'm going to have this to be uh 16 minus 4 that's 12 12 plus 1 that's what 13 so that's 13 divided by 3 so you can see that the correct option here is what the correct option here is b so let's move on to the next question 
in this question they said that uh, the second term of a geometric progression is 24 the fifth term is what 81 find the seventh term good so uh, it's still the same thing like what we've been solving before first thing is that you need to know the nth term of a geometric progression so we know that the nth term of a geometric progression is given as a r n minus 1 so they said the second term is um 24 that means our a r second term okay which is what it does t2 will give us what our t2 is what a r which is 24 so let's call that our first equation and they said the fifth term is 81 that means our t 5 which is what a r 4 that is if you rep if you replace your n with 5 here that means we are going to have this to be what we are going to have this to be um n minus 1 which is going to give us 5 minus 1 which is going to give us what 4 is what 81 so let's call that equation 2 so if we cross multiply again that means we are going to have a r right multiplied by what 81 to be equals to a r 4 multiplied by what 24 so if I divide both sides by uh, A, A will cancel A, right? So that means I'm going to have, um, so if I divide both sides by R here, and divide both sides by R here, and I also divide both sides by 24, right? I divide both sides by this one to by 24. That means R will cancel this R here, and that means I'm going to have, 24 will cancel 24 here, that means I'm going to have R raised to power 3, because this is, R is cancelling one R here. That means I'm going to have R raised to power 3 to be equal to what? 81 over 24, right? So that means I can reduce this by dividing this by what? Each of the numerator and the denominator by 3. 3 in 81 is 27, and 3 in uh, 24 is what? 8. So that means I have R cubed to be equal to 27 all divided by 8. And if I take the cube root of both sides, I take the cube root of both side so that means I'm going to have my radius to be equals to um to be equals to three all divided by two because the cube root of twenty seven is three and the cube root of eight is what is two. So I have this as my radius. Uh sorry I have this as my common ratio. Sorry. So I have this as my common ratio. So if I have this as my common ratio, of course if I uh from your first equation here you see can see clearly that what my A is what twenty four divided by what R. So that means my a is what 24 multiplied by what 2 over 3 because if this is 1 over r so if i take the uh, inverse of this the inverse of this is what 2 over 3 so if i multiply both sides by a that means i'm going to have this to be what um 24 multiplied by what 2 over 3 all right so that means i'm going to have this to be what so 3 here 1 3 and 24 will give me 8 uh 8 so 8 times 2 will give me what will give me 16 so that means my first term is what 16 so what is your um uh seventh term so my seventh term would be what that's t7 would be what a r6 right so that means i'm going to have this to be what's my first term my first term is what uh my first term is 3 over 2 multiplied by your common ratio my common ratio is what 16 all right so my common ratio is what 16 then everything uh, raised to the power of what? Raised to the power of. Uh, sorry, so sorry. My first term is sixteen. Then my common ratio is what? Two, three over two. So my common ratio is raised to the power of six. Okay. So that means I have three raised to the power of six multiplied by sixteen, then divided by two. Okay. So my three raised to the power of six is what? Is uh, seven, seven and twenty-nine. Then my then that means I have this to be what? Two raised to the power of six multiplied by what is sixteen? 16 itself is what 2 raised to the power 4. Alright, so that means uh, 2 raised to the power 4 divides this. That means I will have this to be what 7, 729 divided by what 2 raised to the power 2, which is still the same thing as what 729 all divided by what 4. So don't forget that my first term here is what my six, is 16, and my common ratio is what 3 over 2. And you can use your calculator to evaluate this directly, it will give you your what answer. Okay, so that means our correct uh, option is what option option A. Okay, it's our correct option. So next question, please. In this question, they said if alpha and beta are the root of the equation 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 to be equal to zero, so they ask us to find uh, alpha cube plus beta cube. Okay, so you must bear it in mind that you must have some identities in your brain. Okay, so one of the identities you must uh, 
remember in the exam is this that is if you have alpha cube plus what beta cube all right so that means i'm going to have this to be what alpha plus beta you can see that i can write it from my brain i'm not looking it from i'm not looking at it from any way okay so this is going to give me alpha plus beta multiplied by what is very simple it's just going to give us alpha square minus alpha beta plus what beta square okay so i'm not going to use i want to write another one for you suppose you have want to use alpha cube minus beta cube all right so this is going to give us alpha minus beta right then alpha square plus what alpha beta plus what beta square i'm not interested in this it is this first one i'm going to use okay so now so let me try to write the first one outside so we want to use alpha cube plus beta cube all right so this is going to give me alpha plus beta i can easily determine that right then multiply by alpha square plus beta square so if i merge this and this together of course that means i'm going to have so let me try to write it uh, alpha square plus what beta square minus what alpha beta okay so i want to try to simplify this uh, to something i can easily do what substitute so that means i'm going to have this to be what is my alpha square plus beta square of course i've written this before i'm going to have this to be alpha plus beta all square i told you how you can determine this minus two alpha beta all right so i've actually done this before now then minus this alpha beta so i have this alpha beta here all right so that means that i'm going to have this to be alpha plus beta right multiply by what alpha plus beta whole square minus this is minus two alpha beta then another minus alpha beta that means i'm going to have what minus three alpha beta all right so now having that understanding you, the rest is very simple because we can just use uh the idea of our sum and product your alpha plus beta is what minus b over a and if you compare with general form of a quadratic equation you will see that your b is what my b is what five so that means i'm going to have minus five all divided by what two then my alpha beta is what my alpha beta is c over a which is what three all divided by two so if i substitute it here so that means i'm going to have this to be what i'm going to have this to be um minus five over two minus five over two right then multiply by into bracket minus five over two all square minus three open bracket alpha beta which is what three over two right so that means i'm going to have this to be uh minus five over two right then multiplied by 25 over what four then minus what if you multiply this i'm going to have this to be three times three will give me what nine all divided by what two okay so now uh, let's try to simplify this further you can actually use your calculator but i'm trying not to use calculator in this video okay so that means five over two then this is going to give me the lcm of this is what four that means i'm going to have 25 uh minus what minus 18 right uh then this is going to give me what minus five over two multiplied by 25 minus 18 is what uh okay 25 minus 18 is going to give me seven then divided by what four then this is what minus 35 or divided by what eight okay so i have minus 35 divided by eight. so the correct option here is here so the correct option here is what d all right so let's move on to the next question in this question they said the longest component of a circle is what of course is the circumference <laughs> i can't choose the diameter when the circumference is there and i can't choose an arc when the diameter is here so the correct option here is what is a in this question they said question eight now they said which of the following is not correct which of the following is correct rather this which of the following is incorrect this is 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 incorrect typo error from my side which of the following is incorrect so we want to tell me which of the following that is incorrect that the one that is not correct rather so they said the rational numbers uh numbers can be written as quotient of two integers of course that is that is right quotient of two integers that's right in fact let's look at option b they said rational numbers are any numbers that can be expressed in form of a over b where your a and b are integers very still similar to the first option okay quotient means uh something divided by something if you have something divided by something that this is the meaning of quotient okay so they are saying that the uh, numerator 
and the denominator are was set of integers, which is still the same thing as what option A and B to me are still the same thing. So let's go to option C. It said rational numbers system is not made up of rational and irrational. This is obviously not correct. This is obviously wrong. Okay, because real numbers itself is the combination of rational, all right, and irrational. Okay, so uh, if I take rational and irrational numbers together, I will have my what my real number. Okay, In option D rational numbers can always be expressed uh, using terminating decimal or repeating decimal. This is correct. So the only option that is not correct here is what option C. So we have this as our option C. So next question, please. In this question, it said the radius of the radius of a circle, the radius of a circle x square plus y square minus 6x minus 4y minus 3 to be equals to 0 is what? So we want to find the radius of this circle. Now don't forget that uh, the general form of a, of uh, the general form of a, of the equation of a circle is given as what? Uh, let's try to recall the general form of a general of, a, of an equation of a circle which is given as what? x square plus y square plus what? 2gx plus what? 2fy plus c to be equal to zero of course this is derived from the equation of circle itself that's x minus a all square plus y minus b all square to be equal to what r square okay so we from here we derive this we derive this equation okay so we now have this as our general expression of uh equation of your circle so where your radius itself is given as what is given as the square root of what g square okay plus what f square minus what minus c so we want to find the radius this is our radius okay so that means uh if we compare with this general form of this if we compare this equation right with this equation here so what do we see we see that what we see that our 2gx will be equals to what 6x and our 2fy will be equals to what minus 4 y right so that means uh here i can easily find my g my g will just be what my g that is if i divide both sides by this that means this will cancel that means i'm going to have my g to be what three and my f will be what my f will be what minus minus two so i have my g to be three and my f to be what minus two oh that's good so i have two um parameters here so the left last one is my c okay so if i continue to compare so that means my c here directly is going to give me what's minus three. Oh, I have the three parameters so I can easily calculate my what I can easily calculate my my radius okay so what will be my radius my radius is going to give me what the square root of what uh g square that means that's what three square which is what nine right plus f square that's what minus two square that's what four then minus c that's what minus minus three so that means this is going to give me what the square root of um 9 plus 4 plus what plus 3 so 9 plus 4 is 13 13 plus 3 is what 16 so that means i have the square root of 16 which is what 4 so the radius is what 4 units next question please in this question it said find the find the value of n if the constant coefficient of the system okay uh of a plus b raised to power n are equal are equal so that is actually the question but it's still not it's still not complete why because for two things to be equal so you must talk about two things so to me the question is what the question is what is incomplete so i don't know what to do but i'll just skip this question okay so you can also try it if you try the question and you see that you, you have the answer you can drop your answer in the in the uh in the comments uh, section below and i would love to i would love to see your solution okay so but for now i'll just move on uh to the next question so in this question they said find the length of the of a line segment formed by the points uh, a of um minus a minus b comma a plus b and a plus b comma a minus b so i want to find the line segments okay length of line segments of course from your from your uh knowledge of coded geometry anytime you want to calculate distance between the points x1 comma y1 and 
x2 comma y2 okay so i call it length okay the length between this point and this point okay the, between this line segment okay so if i want to calculate the length of this point that means i'm going to take the square root of what x2 minus x1 all square plus what y2 minus what y1 all what all square okay so what you just need to do is just for you to uh, pick out your x point x1 and your x your y1 and this should be my x2 comma what y2 so if i apply the formula directly so what am i going to have i'm going to have my length my my length to be equal to the square root of what square root of um x2 so what's my what's my x2 my x2 is what uh, a plus b right minus x1 what's my x1 minus x1 that's what minus a minus b don't forget to put your parentheses well then plus what plus y2 that's what a minus b minus y1 that's what a plus b all square so if i try to um expand this bracket so i'm going to have this to be a plus b minus a that's minus times minus times a that's what minus a then minus times minus give me plus then plus what's plus b all square plus what's a minus b minus a minus b all square okay so let me try to simplify this further so i'm going to have this to be of course a will take care of a that's what that's what b square that's b plus b that's 2b then 2b square that's what that's what 4b square okay plus a will take care of a that's what minus b minus 2b okay minus 2b all square will give me what 4b square all right so that means in general we are going to have this solution we are going to have this to be what the square root of what 8b square which i can write as what i can write as the square root of 8 all right multiplied by the square root of b square which is 2 what b and 8 itself can be written as the product of 4 and 2 and multiply by b which is still written as what 2 roots what 2 roots 2 multiply by what multiply by b so the correct option here is what correct option here is c next question they said in this question they said find the equation of a line whose x and y intercepts are what 2 and what 2 over 5 okay so now for you to find the equation of uh for you to find the equation of a line of course they've already given you the x and y intercepts so let's try to sketch uh what they're saying so we have this um this to be our y axis and this to always be our what x axis okay so they give you the they gave us the x intercepts to be 2 over 3 so that means it's cutting it here at point 2 all right the x axis at point 2 and it's cutting the y axis at what at what 2 over what 5 okay so we want to determine this line segment here oh so we want to determine this line what line segment here all right so something like this okay so let me determine the coordinate of this point the coordinate of this point will be what uh so it's on this is on the line this is on the y-axis so that means we are going to have this to be zero comma two over five and this is on the x-axis that means this point will be what two comma zero okay so we have these two points right so that means i need to do what i need to calculate the what the gradient so what will be the gradient the gradient of this line will be what y2 right minus y1 so that means my y2 is this that means i have this to be 2 over 5 minus y1 which is what 0 all divided by x2 my x2 is 0 minus y1 which is what 2 so that means i'm going to have 2 over 5 divided by what minus 2 that's what that's minus divided by minus 2 that means i'm going to have this to be minus 1 over what minus 1 over 5 okay so if i use the point slope formula so using the point slope formula the point slope formula formula so i know the i know my slope now formula 
of course what is your point slope formula since that you are going to have this to be y minus y1 so you can pick any of this as your y1 so let me pick as this as my y1 so which is what 0 over x minus x1 that's what x minus 2 must be equal to my gradient which is what minus 1 over 5 so that means I'm going to have this to be y all divided by x minus 2 to be equal to what to be equal to minus 1 over 5 right so if I cross multiply so that means I'm going to have this to be uh, 5y right to be equal to this is negative x right then plus what 2 so if I call it like this that means I'm going to have this to be what x plus what 5y to be equal to what 2 of course what to be our option what to be our answer this is our answer so what will be the correct option the correct option will be what the correct option will be a in this question they said find the possible general term find the possible general term for the following sequence so we have this to be 1 over 2 comma 3 over 11 comma 5 over 26 all right so you can see that uh, for the uh, numerators all right so general term for the numerators is actually uh, if you look at it you can see that the first term here is 1 uh, the first term here is 1 you can see that it follows a particular, particular difference there's a common difference between 1 3 and 5 the common difference here is just 2 okay between 1 and 3 3 minus 1 is 2 5 minus 3 is what 2 so there's a constant difference all right so that means um, that means this is a linear the numerator is a linear sequence and a linear sequence can be represented as what a plus what n minus 1 bracket d your first term is 1 all right your common difference is what 2 so if I rearrange this that means I'm going to have 1 plus 2 n minus 2 which is citizen as what 2 n minus 1 so that means we have the numerator to be what the general term for the numerator is what 2 n minus 1 but for the denominator the denominator is kind of uh, uh there's no constant difference so um just trying to go and look at uh look at the first look at my possible option to determine what could be the uh, general term so if you look at this first option we have 2 n square uh, we have 2 n minus 1 so that means our option could be a or b okay so but we are still going to test because the numerator are kind of different okay so if you test for this the numerator the denominator of this one okay so if we put one here so we are going to have three um multiply by one which is three, three then three minus one will give us two so it gives us that oh that's good so if you put one here in the option b so that means it will give us a our answer oh that's good so let's try to put two so we have three um we have two square two square is what four right four multiplied by three is what twelve then twelve minus one will, will give us eleven okay so let's test for option b two square is what two cube is eight eight plus one will give us nine so you can see that this one uh when you test for one uh it will give you the first term here when you test for n equals to two if you test for n equals to one it will give you this one here if you test for n equals to two it will not give us this one here so the correct option is what a okay so you can even test for it if you have two n minus one over three n square minus one let's say this is your n term okay so your first term okay if you put n to be one will give me one over what one over two your a2 if i put n to be two here i'm going to have this to be what three right all divided by put two here you are going to have 12 12 minus 1 will give you what 11 so you can continue in that manner you can see that the correct option here is what is a so just mere uh compare is just a little about just a little calculation you have your what your answer okay let's move on to the next question this question says that it said if alpha and beta are the root of the equation 3x squared minus 5x plus 1 to be equal to 0 they ask us to find alpha alpha square minus what minus beta square the very first thing that came to my mind is for me to anywhere i see alpha square minus beta square first very first thing that came to my mind is what a difference of two square okay so we have alpha square minus beta square okay which is what alpha plus beta multiplied by what alpha minus what minus beta okay so that means i can write this as what alpha plus beta but alpha minus beta itself has its own as its own uh, identity alpha minus beta can be written as because i want to have my uh 
any of my uh, any of my identity given to me to be in terms of either alpha plus beta or alpha uh, minus beta okay sorry alpha plus beta and what alpha beta okay so that means i can rewrite this as what sum and product okay so i should be able to write anything given to me as uh, in terms of sum and product of what of its roots okay so that means i'm going to have this to be what alpha plus beta plus beta all square minus four alpha beta okay so this is actually the uh the expression for this what for this statement okay so that means i'm going to have this to be what square root of alpha plus beta all square minus four alpha beta okay so that means if i uh of course you all know your alpha plus beta to be what minus b over a then alpha beta to be equals to what c all divided by a so what is my uh, my beta uh, my b over a yeah, that's what five over three then what is my alpha beta that alpha beta that which is what c over a, that means i will have this to be what one over what three so if i replace everything here inside this place what am i going to have i'm going to have this to be what five over three right multiplied by the square root of if i replace that directly i'm going to have this to be what 25 over what over nine minus four open brackets c over a that's what one over three Right, so that means I'm going to have this to be five over three, then multiply by the what by the square root of twenty-five over nine, then minus four over what three. Okay, so if I take the OCM of what's inside, that means I'm going to have this to be five over three, still outside to be um, multiplied by the square root of what's the OCM? The OCM here is what nine, right? So that means I'm going to have this to be twenty-five um, plus minus twelve why because 9 divided by 3 is what 3 then 3 multiplied by uh, th uh 4 here will give me what 12 don't forget that there's minus in front of here so that means i'm going to have to be what 5 over 3 uh square root of 25 minus 12 25 minus 12 is 13 right so that means i have 13 over what over 9 so which is still the same thing as what uh 5 over 3 right then this is what square root of 13 then what is square root of 9 square root of 9 is what is the 3 so that means i'm going to have this to be 5 square root of 13 all divided by 3 times 3 is what 9 so the correct option here is what correct option here is is um b okay so in the next question let's go to the next question in this question they said which of the following are examples of empty sets empty sets are set that doesn't contain any element okay so that's an exa example that's the meaning of empty sets so let's look at these possible options they said the set of even natural numbers divisible by what divisible by three set of even natural numbers divisible by three so i'm trying to create a set i'm trying to see if i can create a set is with this condition set of even natural numbers okay divisible by three okay i think this is part of them because this is an even natural number which is what divisible by three so at least i have one element so this cannot be what this cannot be an empty set okay the set of all prime numbers divisible by two the set of all prime numbers divisible by two i think two is two is a prime number okay divisible by two so that means two is part of it so that means this cannot be an empty set because it contains at least one element so the third one is that x is a rational is a natural number such that five is less or equals to x less or equals to six so they are trying to ask you that can i find the natural number uh between five and six is there any natural number between five and six no i don't think so so i don't think so i don't think you can find a natural number between five and six the only natural number between there's no natural number between five and six you can only have a real number between uh five and six or a rational number between five and six okay so the next one is the set of all the natural numbers divisible by what divisible by two the set of all uh the set of all the natural numbers divisible by two set of all natural numbers i don't think you can ever find a set of uh there's no elements okay that satisfy this uh this condition the set of odd numbers divisible by two odd numbers start from three so three naturally odd numbers are not divisible by two 
okay so that's even disqualified that's uh premises okay so the last one is x is a prime number such that 54 is less than x less than 58 so even if you try to list all the elements between this okay we have 54 we have 54 uh 55 56 57 and 58 okay so you will discover that all these numbers here are not what are not prime are uh, not prime number okay they are not prime number they have more than one they have more than two factors okay so 54 obviously has more than two factors 55 obviously has more than two factors 56 obviously has more than two factors 57 obviously has more than two factors likewise like 58 so that means this is um this is also what empty because all these numbers are not prime so this set itself is what empty so which of the following are examples of empty set of course cde cd of course the correct option here is what is d in this question they said um the term x raised to the power 4 in the in the expansion of uh, 2 over x plus x square all divided by 4 then everything raised to the power 14 is so i want to find the uh term x raised to the power 4 in the expression okay so the that particular term so that means i need to look for the uh I, I need to look for the term that actually has x raised to power 4 in this what in this expression okay so don't forget that i want to ref i want to refresh your your memory under a uh, binomial uh, theorem so let's say if you have let's say if you have a plus b all right raised to power n you know that a plus b raised to power n can be exp using the uh binomial theorem you can expand this as was the summation of what summation of r starting from what zero up to what up to n of n combination r all right uh, of a raised to power n minus r b raised to power what r right so that means if i have my n to be 14 that means i will have this to be a plus uh a plus that means i will have this to be 2 over x right plus x square all divided by 4 everything is power 14 to be equal to if i apply this theorem that means i'm going to have this to be summation r starting from zero up to what up to 14 of a that means my a is 2 over x 2 over x raised to power what raised to power uh 14 minus r then b that's what x square all divided by what all divided by 4 everything raised to power what everything raised to power r okay so now they said we want to find the term that actually has um that actually has x raised to power four okay so now for you to have x raised to power four in this what in this expansion okay you want to make sure that two over x everything raised to power 14 minus r multiplied by x square all divided by four everything raised to power r is actually what is actually uh equals to a constant all right multiplied by x raised to power 4 okay you want to make sure that you have a constant multiplied by x raised to power 4 because this is want to make sure that this expression here is equals to uh, a constant an arbitrary constant multiplied by x raised to power what x raised to power 4 okay so i actually left out the uh the idea of combination here that means this should be 14 combination combination r okay there's no one to remind me here actually okay so now if i expand this uh this guy here don't forget your identities under under um, indices that if is that is if you have a over b everything raised to power c this can be written as a raised to power c divided by what b raised to power c all right so that means i will have this to be what 2 raised to power 14 minus r all divided by what x raised to power 14 minus r then multiplied by what x raised to power 2 r i'm using my law of indices this is x raised to power 2 is now raised to power r again that means 2 will multiply what r that means i will have x raised to power what 2 r right then all divided by what 4 raised to power r to be equal to what k multiplied by what x raised to power what 4 so well let me try to group all this uh constants into one side then get interested in the word variable okay so that means i'm going to have my two two raised to power 14 minus r right 
4 divided by what 4 raised to the power r then multiplied by what multiplied by x raised to the power 2 r all divided by what x raised to the power 14 minus r okay so that means i'm going to have this to be equals to what k multiplied by what x raised to the power 4 so you can see that this is your k here right and this is this should be my what x raised to the power 4 everything in this expression should be what should be equal to x raised to the power 4 so that means i'm going to have x raised to the power 2 r right minus 14 plus r do you know why this plus because i'm using my law of indices this is this is division so that means i'm going to have minus of 14 minus 2 r which is still different as what minus 14 uh minus plus r okay to be equal to what x raised to power what's 4 so that means i'm going to have this to be 3r so if i compare it so, so if i equate the uh the, the base if i equate the base that means i'm going to have uh 2r plus r that means i'm going to have this to be what 3r minus 14 to be equal to what's 4 okay so if i call it like times that means i'm going to have 3r to be equal to 14 plus 4 is 18 so that means I'm going to have my R to be equal to what? To be equal to 6. So my R is what? 6. So if my R is 6, what does that imply? That implies that what? I'm going to have this to be... Let me shift this down a little bit. So that means if my R is 6, that means I'm going to have um, seventh term. My R is 6, that means my, uh, my seventh term would be what? My seventh term, that's 6 plus 1 would be what n combination r n combination r your r plus one term let me try to write it again don't forget that anytime in your binomial expansion let me quickly explain something to you that if you have a binomial expansion that's a plus b raised power two by the time you expand this how many times will you have you will have about three terms right so if you have raised power three you are going to have four terms by the time you expand it okay if you have if you expand x plus b raised power three you are going to have four terms okay so generally if you have a plus b raised to power n you are going to have what n plus one what n plus one terms okay so because you are going to start from zero so i'm going to write this as what t r plus one so that means my first term will be when my r is what zero okay so here i have my r to be six so that means it is the seventh term that we have uh that we have something like x raised power what x raised power four i hope you get the idea okay so i'm trying to see if i can communicate something to you okay so that means i'm going to have this to be tr plus one my tr plus one generally is can be written as what n combination r right a raised power what n minus r b raised to power what b raised to power r so that means my seventh term right which is still different as what your six plus one term all right that's t six plus one my seventh term this is actually seventh term seventh term right would be what that's what n combination what's my n my n there is what 14 right 14 combination six right then i have my a my a is what my a is uh my a let me go up a little bit just to see my a my a is 2 over x 2 over x all right everything raised to power 14 minus 6 14 minus 6 is 8 right then i have this to be b raised to power r that's what x square over 4 everything raised to power r so what's my r my r is what six okay so that means i have 14 combination six 14 combination six then two raised to power eight multiplied by what two raised to power eight all divided by what x raised to power what eight then um then this to be what this is one over four raised to power six right coming from here four raised to power six multiplied by x square then everything is power 6 will give me x raised to power what x raised to power 12 okay so that means i'm going to have this to be what 14 combination 6 uh multiplied by what 2 raised to power 8 
all divided by what four is power six then this is x raised power 12 x raised power 12 divided by x raised power 8 is still what x raised power 12 minus 8 which is what x raised power 4 that means i have this my, as my term so i can just use my calculator to simplify this i can actually use my hand to simplify this, this but it will take me time so i'll just uh carefully use my calculator so okay so that means let me have my calculator here so here now i have 16 combi 14 combination 16 14 combination 6 we have 14 combination 6 combination 6 so 14 combination 6 is 3000 so i have this to be uh 3003 right so i have this to be 3003 and also uh two so i have this to be 3003 and also let me try to find the other expression so i have 2 raised to the power 8 then divided by what 4 raised to the power 6 4 raised to the power 6 so this is going to give me what 1 over 16 so that means this is over what over 16 multiplied by what x raised to the power 4 so we have this to be what 3003 over 16 multiplied by what x raised to the power what x raised to the power 4 so from here so what will be our correct option so the term x raised to power 4 in the expression blah 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 is what 3003 all divided by 16 multiplied by what x raised to power what 4 so the correct option here is what correct option here is c let's move on to the next question it said the sum of the constant coefficient of the expansion a plus b everything raised to power n is what is what is is what the answer is actually 2n okay so let me show you how we have 2n they said the sum of all the constant coefficients okay now if you have um this uh, binomial expansion okay you can remember that if you have a plus b raised to power n this can be written as what the summation of r starting from zero up to what up to n of n combination r right a raised to power n minus r b raised to power what? b raised to power r okay so let me make uh my a to be equals to one and my vote and my b also to be equals to one so if i do that what am i going to have on this left hand side here i'm going to have what one plus one raised to power n okay to be equals to the summation of r starting from zero up to what up to n of what of n combination r right of course one raised to power anything is still one then b raised to power uh, 1 raised to the power r is still 1. 1 raised to the power n minus r is still going to give me what? Is it going to give me what? 1. So that means I have this as uh, 2 raised to the power n to be equal to. You can look at this question. They said the sum of the constant coefficient of constant coefficient of the expansion. So of course this is the, this is this is like the constant coefficient of each of the expansion. So that means we are going to have the summation of n combination 0 plus n combination 1 plus what n combination what 2 plus n combination 3 plus n combination anything you want that's n combination what n right so by the time you sum of this all these numbers together because these are the constant coefficients of this expansion and i believe that you understand how i have this constant uh, how i have this this expansion here okay so that is if you put k to be equals to r to be equals to zero that means we are going to have n combination r zero okay plus summation of this blah 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 so you have this what result so you can agree with me that the sum of the constant coefficient of the expansion a plus b raised to power n is what two raised to power what n okay again just replace a with one and b with one that means we are going to have this to be one plus one raised to power n which is what two raised to power n and if you do it on the left hand side on the right hand side here you will have your desired uh you have your desired argument that is the constant coefficient of what of this expansion so let's move on to the next question please in this question they said the set a equals to blah 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 a equals to x comma x raised to power n comma x square minus 3x plus 2 equals to 0 is what is which kind of sets so they are asking me to find uh as uh, they said a all right is x okay so i want to collect some numbers some natural numbers such that x square minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0 so what are the values of x that satisfy this condition so if you solve this x square minus 3x plus 2 okay to be equal to 0 this is actually x minus 1 x minus what 2 
to be equal to zero that means x is equal to what one and what two okay so if i collect this set that means i'm going to have set one and set two okay so which kind of set is this this cannot be what null set this cannot be what infinite set and it cannot be none of the above this is actually a finite set because i can actually quote count them all right so next question please so in this question it said that let a be what be x such that x is a letter in the word follow and b such uh be the set of elements such that y is a let with a letter in the word wolf so what do you notice you can see that y is not equal to b okay all right so you can see that why a is not equal to what a is not obviously not equal to b because a is not a subset of b and b is not a subset of what it's not a subset of a so that means a is not equal to what it's not equal to b so the correct option here is what is d okay so next question please so they said in this question they said we should do what we should find the coordinates of the point which divides the line 4 comma minus 7 and minus 3 comma 3 in the ratio what 2 comma 3 all right so for us to find the coordinates of the point that divides it we can actually use the formula directly but in this case i'm not going to use the formula directly i'm just going to, i'm just trying to i'm just going to do it in a way in which uh in case if you forget the formula you can you, you can easily do what you can easily follow that procedure okay so let's try to see if I can solve it without using my formula okay so let's try to sketch the line segments okay so now we have this something like this all right so let me say this is my point a that's point four comma minus seven and this is my what's point what's point b which is what minus one comma what's three okay this is my point a and this is my what point b okay so let's this line segment be any point on this line okay so this is point p all right which is x comma what y in the ratio 2 to what to 3 right so this is ratio 2 to 3 all right so let me try to see if i can complete this diagram by joining this something like this so we have something like this okay so and we have something like this and we have this like this so that means we have two triangles okay so this is actually the first triangle so let me see if i can so you can see the shaded um triangle so now let's look try to see that you can see that this triangle here is similar to this what is similar to this triangle over here so we have this two, two similar triangles so this angle is what this triangle here okay so let me actually name this this is point p let's say this is r okay and let's say this is point what point s okay so you can see that triangle a p r is similar to triangle p b s okay so with that uh with the concept of similar triangles you will see that what that the ratio of line a p all right towards to line p b will be the same thing as the ratio of line a r all right to what to line p s okay and it will be the same thing as the ratio of line line p r all right to what b s okay so we have that so now what is your line a p your line a p is what two right so we have line a p to be what two over what three will be the same thing as what line ar so what's your line ar your ar is what my ar here will be what my ar would be so let's say my this is my x comma y so this point to be x comma some points let's call it y let's say y uh y1 all right so let's call it y not let me use y not okay so this is like some point x comma y not okay so if what is my ar my ar is the distance between the x x axis here okay so we have this to be x minus 4 
all right so what's my ps ps so my ps will be what minus one okay so minus one minus x okay so we have this to be the x-axis that's what minus one here so this is not the x point is not changing here so whether it is here it's not changing whether it is here it's not changing whether it is here it's not changing so it's, it's still what minus one comma what uh minus one minus x okay then we have pr 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 so that means i'm going to have this to be diff so this is going to be what x comma this should be x comma s comma minus this should be x comma minus seven okay so this should have been x comma minus seven and this should have been minus one minus one comma y okay so this should have been minus one comma y so if i think what is my pr my pr is what y minus seven right y minus seven y minus minus seven so there's there's minus in front of minus there's, there's minus in front of seven all divided by what all divided by bs my bs is for three uh three minus y so that should be three minus y so i'm just using the concept of similar triangles to determine the sides okay of what to relate the sides of the uh, of the triangles with what with the given um with the given parameter okay so that means i'm going to have this to be what two over three to be equal to x minus four all divided by what minus one minus x then to be equal to y plus seven all divided by what three minus what y okay so that means uh for the first one that means i'm going to have two over three to be equal to what x minus four all divided by what minus one minus x so if i cross multiply that means i'm going to have this to be 3x minus what 12 to be equal to what minus 2x minus 2 so that means i'm going to have 5x okay because if you bring 2x here that means i'm going to have 5x to be what uh to be equal to what 10 if you bring minus 12 here i'm going to have this to be minus 12 plus 2 uh, minus 2 plus 12 that's what 10 that means my x is what my x is 2 again if you compare this equation here with if you equate this and this together that means i'm going to have 2 over 3 to be equal to what 4 y plus what 7 all divided by what 3 minus what y so if i cross multiply that means i'm going to have 6 minus what 2y to be equal to what 3y plus what plus 21 okay so plus 21 so if i collect like times that means i'm going to have minus 5y to be equal to what 15 that means my y is what minus 3 so that means the coordinate of the point which divides it this will be what uh x which is what 2 comma what minus 3 so the correct option here is what is c in this question they said find the values of x and y in the equation x open bracket 1 plus i all square plus y open bracket 2 minus i all square to be equal to 3 uh, plus 10 i so the very thing we must we must do here is do what is to expand okay so and don't forget that anytime you are expanding a plus b i this is going to give you what this is going to give you if you are squaring this okay this is going to give you what a square minus what b square plus 2 b i so that means your i square itself is what minus one okay so by the time you are squaring i it's going to give you what minus what minus one so let's means that means that what we are going to have is to be what x open brackets so if we expand what is inside this bracket so that means we are going to have this to be what one minus one right plus what plus two i okay so because i square is what minus one that's why we have this to be what minus one then plus what y then here we have this to be what four all right minus i times minus i will give me minus one okay that means we have this to be what minus one then two times minus i will give you what minus two i then multiply by two that will give you what minus four i right to be equal to what three plus what ten i so if i expand it that means i'm going to have this to be two 
x i because 1 minus 1 will give me 0 then i'll be left with what with 2i 2i multiplied by x will give me what 2xi plus what uh plus y open bracket what 3 minus what 4i to be equal to 3 plus what 10 plus 10i so if i expand this further that means i'm going to have to be this to be what 2xi plus y plus 3y because 3 times y will give me 3y all right then minus 4yi to be equal to 3 plus 10i so let me rearrange a little bit i'm going to have this to be what 3y all right plus what 2x minus 4y i to be equal to 3 plus what 10 high so if i compare the real and the imaginary parts together what am i going to have i'm going to have 3y to be equal to 3 which implies that what my y is equal to 1 and i'm also going to have 2x minus 4y to be equal to 10 so don't forget that your y is what 1 that means i'm going to have 2x to be equal to 10 plus 4 which is what 14 which implies that what my x will be what 7 so uh, you can see that your x is what 7 and your y is what 1 so the correct option here is what is what b in this question they said the third term of a geometric the third term and the system of a geometric progression are 18 and minus what 32 respectively find the sum of the first seven terms okay so don't forget generally again that the nth term of a geometric progression is given as what a r n minus one in case you forget so the third term that's if you replace your n with three will give me what a r two okay which is what 108 and the sixth, sixth term that means t6 is what a r five which is what minus 32 okay so here we are given a r two to be what 108 so that means here a r five can still be written as a r uh raised power three multiplied by r square okay to be equal to what minus 32 okay so let's say this is our equation one and this one is our equation two so i'm just trying to uh, rewrite this equation two in such a way that i can easily insert sorry this should have been a square then this two should be that been three so i'm just trying to rewrite equation two in a way in, in such a way that i can easily is, is easily insert the first equation inside the second equation so if i insert that if i do that what am i going to have that means i'm going to have, if i substitute uh equation uh 108 for what for a raised part two in what in equation two so that means i'm going to have uh, r cube multiplied by what 108 to be equal to what minus 32 so which implies that what my r cube will be what my r cube will be minus 32 all divided by what 108 and if i divide this further i'm going to have this to be what minus 8 over what 27 all right so that means my r is just the cube root of the cube root of minus 8 over 27 which is what minus 2 over 3 all right so i have my common ratio to be what minus 2 over 3 so if my common ratio is common ratio is that so what to be my a my first term that means my first term will be what my first term will be a all divided by what 108 all divided by what r square so don't forget that your a don't forget that your common ratio is what minus 2 over 3 that means i'm going to have this to be what 108 all divided by r square that means if i square this that's what i'm going to have this to be minus 2 over 3 all square which is still the same as what 108 multiplied by what r square that's 3 square all divided by what minus 2 square which is still what 9 over what 4 right so that means i'm going to have this to be what 243 so if you divide this that means i'm going to have this to be four here one four in one way it is what 27 okay so then 27 times 9 will give me what 243 okay so they ask us to find the sum of sum of the first seven terms so it's sum of the first seven okay so what is the sum of the geometric progression the sum of the geometric progression when your r is less than one all right is what when the absolute value of r is less than one is given as what 
is given as a over bracket 1 minus r raised to the power n all divided by what 1 minus r okay so what is my first term my first term is what 243 multiplied by 1 minus r raised to the power n that means my, what is my r my r is what minus 2 over 3 everything raised to power what raised to the power 7 right all divided by what 1 minus minus 2 over 3 okay so that means i'm going to have this to be 243 multiplied by what 1 minus minus 2 over 3 everything raised to the power 7 okay then all divided by 1 plus 2 over 3 so let me just use my calculator to uh, evaluate that all right so that means i'm going to have let me try to see how i can type this on the calculator so that i have 243 right multiplied by 1 minus um this should be 2 minus 2 over 3 minus 2 all divided by 3 okay so that means everything is raised to power 7 so let me cover this bracket then everything divided by what everything divided by 1 plus what 2 over 3 1 plus 2 over 3 so that means i have 463 divided by what 3 463 divided by what 3 so that means the answer could have been this but just because of type error this the answer is what 400 and 463 all divided by what 3 so the answer is this just because of type error this should have been 3 not 1 okay so this should have been 3 and not what and not 1 so we have this to be our what our results so i hope you understand the idea okay so uh, now let's move on to the next question they said the, the cubic equation 2 z cube minus 5 z square plus c z minus 5 to be equals zero uh where c belongs to what r okay if one of the roots of the equation if one of the roots is equal to 1 minus 2 i so they want us to find the value of c okay so now if we let our f of z be equals to 2 z cube minus 5 z square plus what c z minus 5 to be equals to 0 and it now tell us that uh z equals to 1 minus uh 1 minus 2 y is one of its roots so what does that implies that implies that what f of 1 minus 2 i must be equal to zero that is if we substitute one minus two i directly into this uh this our f of z it must give us what it must give us what zero okay so now if we do that let's try to substitute it so what we have f of one minus two i all right so that means we are going to have this to be two open brackets what one minus two i all cube right minus five open brackets one minus two i all square plus what c into what 1 minus 2i then minus what minus 5 right so if we expand this that means we are going to have this to be so we have uh, 1 minus 2i raised power 3 so that means we can write this as what 1 minus 2i raised power 2 then multiply by what 1 minus 2i so let me first find 1 minus 2i uh, raised power 2 okay so which is still the same as what 1 minus 2i multiplied by what 1 minus 2i so if i expand this guy what am i going to have i'm going to have this to be 1 multiplied by 1 will give me what 1 then 1 multiplied by 2 minus 2i that will give me what minus 2i then this will give me what minus 2i minus times minus will give me plus then i times i will give me what minus i minus 1 then multiply by 2 my multiply by 4 you give me what you give me minus four so that means this itself is what this itself is what minus three then minus what minus four i so this is the square of this so if i multiply this result by one minus two i so what am i going to have i'm going to have this to be this is minus three then this is what's plus six i right then multiply this with this i will have what i will have this to be minus four i 
then this is what minus times minus will give me plus then i times i will give me minus one then four times two will give me what will give me minus eight all right so that means i'm going to have this to be what um minus 11 okay then plus 2i okay minus 11 plus 2i so that means i'm going to have this to be 2 open brackets minus 11 plus what 2i right then minus 5 open brackets what is the square of this i have my square of this to be what this result here that's what minus 3 minus 4i right then plus c open bracket 1 minus 2i okay minus what 5 must be what 0 because i've already solved it because they said z equals to 1 minus 2y is what is what is one of the truths that means by the time we substitute the value of z to be equal to 1 minus 2i it must give me what it must give me 0 all right so let's continue so that means we are going to have this to be minus 22 plus what 4i right so i pray we don't make mistakes so that means this will give us what plus 15 then this is what plus 20 5 times 4 is 20 i then plus c then minus 2 um c i right then minus 5 to be equal to what zero so that means that if we simplify this further that means we have minus 22 plus 15 minus 5 will give us uh, this to be what minus 12 then plus 4i plus 20i minus 2i will give me um give me minus this will actually give me 20 plus 4 it will give me 22 okay so this is 4i then plus 20i that's 24i minus okay this is this is supposed to be 24 i okay 24i and i have minus minus 2 ci here to be equal to zero so that means that if i there's something here there should be plus c here there should be plus c here plus c okay this plus c here this c here that means plus c to be equal to zero so i can write this for that to be what minus 12 plus c then plus 24 minus 2c let me put this into i to be equals to zero so don't forget that if i compare the real to this real you can see that this can be written as zero plus zero i okay so that means if i compare this with this real here and i compare this imaginary with this imaginary here so you will see that what minus 12c minus 12 plus what plus c is actually equal to zero so that means my c is what my c is actually 12. even if you use this one 24 minus 2c to be equal to 0 you find out that what my c is actually equals to what 12 so the correct option here is what is a in this question they said that given that z is equals to minus 3 plus 4 i and zw is equals to minus 14 plus what plus 2 i find the modulus and argument of w okay so we are given actually that zw is what z multiplied by w is actually what minus 14 plus what plus 2i and that means that what that means that our w itself can be written as what minus 14 plus what 2i all divided by what all divided by z okay so that means we have this to be what minus 14 plus 2i all divided by z what's my z my z is what minus 3 plus what 4i so if i multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugates of the denominator so that means i have this to be what minus 3 minus 4i all divided by what minus 3 minus 4i okay so if i expand this guy here the numerator what am i going to have i'm going to have minus 14 times minus 3 will give me what 42 then minus 14 times minus 4 here will give me what uh plus 56i okay so if you continue that manner so we have this to be what minus 6i plus what plus 8 okay to all divided by this is the difference of two square that is if you have a square minus b square this is what a plus b and what's a minus b okay so if you have difference and sum 
multiplying each other so what are you going to have here you're just going to have the difference of the two what of the two square so if you apply the general prince that pr same principle here because i don't want to be multiplying this out i can just apply that uh that simple concept directly so what am i going to have i'm going to have this to be what i'm going to have this to be minus three multiply by minus three will give me what nine and this is what minus plus times minus will give me what minus right then i times i will give me what minus one okay so that means this changes to what plus then four times four will give me what 16. oh i'm good to go so that means i'm going to have this to be um this should be uh 50 my plus uh plus 50i all divided by what 25 so that means my w would have been what 2 plus what 2i okay so what is the modulus of w of course that's quite easy that means the modulus of w would be what square root of 2 square plus what 2 square so that means this is what that means this is the square root of what 4 plus 4 which is what square root of 8 and it's still then as what 2 square root of what 2 okay so we have our radius to be two, what 2 square root of what 2 so what will now be the argument of z the argument of z is kind of also what somewhat easier right so what the first question you ask yourself is that which quadrant does this uh z falls into you can see that if i draw my quadrant you can see that it falls in the fourth in the first quadrant x and y are both what positive okay this is my real uh, real axis and this is like my imaginary axis and if i plot this here i'm going to have a uh, point p of two comma what two i so it's in the first quadrant so that means i can directly use what actan of what y over x that's what two over two which is what actan of what actan of one which is what pi over what pi over pi over four so that means the modulus is what two root two and the what and the argument is what pi over what pi over four so the correct option here is what correct option here is b next question they said in this question they said um calculate the distance of the point p of minus two comma four from the line with the equation 3x plus what plus 4y to be equal to 11 okay so they ask us to calculate the distance from a point uh of a point from a line okay so for you to calculate the distance let's say look at this formula i want to give you let's say you are given a point x comma x1 comma y1 and a line and a line ax plus what by all right plus c to be equal to zero okay so if you want to calculate the distance between this point and this line all right so the formula is given as what the formula is given as the absolute value of a multiplied by what x1 right plus b multiplied by what x by y1 right then plus c all right uh divided by what the square root of a square plus what plus b square right so if i take the absolute value of this right so that's that's that so i want to find the distance between this point here and this what and this line here so if i want to calculate that distance i can use this formula directly right so that means i'm going to have the absolute value of a so what's my a my a if i compare this equation with this what this equation over here so that means i'm going to have this to be what i'm going to have this to be a that's three multiply by x1 that means what i'm going to have is what minus 2 plus what 4 multiplied by what 4 multiplied by y1 my y1 here is what 4 then plus c so what is my plus c of course if i bring 11 to the other side here that means i'm going to have this to be what to be uh, homogeneous which is what equals to what equals to zero right so that means i'm going to have my c to be what minus 11 of course if you bring it here so that means you have this to be what minus 11 all divided by what all divided by the square root of uh minus 2 square square root of 30 square rather 30 square then plus what 4 square okay so that means i'm going to have this to be what uh minus 6 minus 6 plus what 16 then minus what 11 all divided by 30 square plus 4 square is square root of 25 which is what 
which is 5 then that means I'm going to have this to be what minus 1 over 5 to be equals to what uh, so if you take the absolute value of this that means you are going to have this to be 1 over what 5 okay so the correct option here is what is B in this question they said find the fourth term of the sequence given of the sequence given that your first term is what 3 and your ak plus 1 is equals to uh, 3 ak minus 2 this is actually a problem or recursive sequence and you can easily solve that easily so you are given the first term to be what 3 so what will be the second term so what we just need to do is just for us to do what is for us to actually um impute those numbers here directly for you to get your a1 it's uh, your a2 a3 and your and so on and so forth so because you are we already given uh your first term to be what three so that means your a2 would be when my k is one so if my k is one that means i'm going to have three a1 minus two to be equals to three multiplied by a1 that's what three right minus two that means we are going to have this to be 3 minus 2 will give us uh, uh, 3 times 3 will give us 9 then 9 minus 2 will give us what 7 all right so that means um we are going to the fourth term so that means let's proceed to this third term so the third term would have been a uh a2 minus what minus minus 2 right so that means we are going to have this to be 3 open bracket a2 so what's your a2 your a2 is what your a2 is 7 right minus what 2 that means we have 21 minus 2 that's what 19 so then a4 your a4 is actually 3 multiplied by what 19 minus 2 which is what 3 times 19 is um is 38 38 uh sorry 58 57 57 minus 2 is what 50 what 55 so that's that so the fourth term of this sequence is actually what 55 so the correct option here is what is b okay so in this question they say which of the following statement is not what is not correct now look at this first option it said if theta is in third quadrant okay then its related angle theta is obtained by subtracting um 180 degree minus what from theta okay the very first thing you might want to do is what do you understand by related angle related angle the concept of related angle is very simple so suppose you have your quadrant okay so let's say this is your first quadrant this is your second quadrant this is your third quadrant and this is your what's fourth quadrant okay so this related angle actually related angle of a given angle theta is the positive angle acute angle between the x-axis and the terminal side of what of theta when it is in the standard form all right so that's what that's what we mean by what related angle okay so you can actually uh understand uh your related angle in the sense that suppose you have like an angle is in this second quadrant okay so let's say this is your theta this is your standard angle theta okay so your related angle is actually the angle between the um the terminal side okay the terminal side of your standard angle and the what the x-axis okay so this is your x-axis right so this is your uh, related angle let's call it phi so this is your related angle phi all right so you can see that for you to determine um so you can see that in the third quadrant so let's say your angle is in is actually in this third quadrant here let's say your theta is actually in this third quadrant here let me draw that with uh with my red marker so let's say my theta falls in this third in this third quadrant here suppose everything here is my theta so my related angle will actually be the angle between this terminal side here and this x axis so if everything is what theta right so that means this small side here would have been what theta minus what 180 degrees so this will be my what my related angle okay so the first option here is what is correct so this option here is correct none of them is not part of them okay so here the third option here is they said if theta is any 
angle in second quadrant then my theta is what my theta would be what 180 minus theta of course that's what obviously right suppose let me draw that with a black marker so suppose this is your what suppose this is your uh, theta okay suppose this is your theta then your related angle phi would be what your related angle phi would be what 180 minus theta so which is also what which is also correct this is also correct so they said the related angle of a given angle theta is what is the positive ang acute angle between the x-axis and the terminal side of course this is also what this is also correct so all of them are correct except this b none of the above because they said which of the following statements is not correct none of them is not what is not correct so the correct option here is what correct option here is b none of what none of them okay because all these options here are correct the first option here is correct the second the third option here is correct and the last option here too is also what's correct so the only option there left for us is what is b which is none of the above in this question they said find the zeros of the function f of z f of x to be equal to x raised to the power 5 plus 4x cubed minus 45x okay so we want to find the zeros of this what of this, fun of this function now for us to find the zero zeros of this function you will see something now let's try to see if we can notice it uh notice a pattern in this what in this expression given above you will see that if i factorize x out so we want to fa look for the zeros of this function so that means let's try to equate the function itself to be what to to zero that means we have x to the power 5 plus 44x cube minus what 45 to be equal to 0 45x to be equal to 0 so if I factorize x what am I going to have that means I'm going to have x open brackets what x raised to the power 4 plus 4x square minus what 45 to be what to be 0 right so you will notice that you have the product of two numbers to be 0 so that means it's either what x is equal to 0 or you have x raised to the power 4 plus what plus 4x square minus 45 to be equal to 0 and i can write this as what x square everything else square plus what 4x square minus what 45 to be equal to 0 and if i apply the quadratic uh, formula for me to find the variable x square so that means i'm going to have this to be of course i can easily factorize this that means i'm going to have this to be what x square um x square plus what nine and this is what x square minus five because nine multiplied by five would give me what would give me minus 45 and then nine minus five would give me what 4x so this is kind of easy so you have this to be zero so that implies that what my x square will be what minus nine or i have my x square to be equal to what five so that means my x would have been what plus or minus what plus or minus what minus 3i 3i because if you square if you take the square root of both sides that means you have uh, x to be what uh, 3 uh, plus or minus 3i or you have x to be what plus or minus the square root of what 5 because if you take the square root of both sides here you are going to have this to be what square root of uh square root of x square which, which is still the same as what x and square root of 5 will remain as what plus or minus root 5 so the correct option here is so that means we have our x to be 0 uh plus or minus 3i and what uh plus or minus square root of what 5 so the correct option here is what correct option here is c sometimes the option might look the same so you have to make sure that you pick the right what the right option so we are almost done question 29 it said that which of the following does not represent an uh, a circle okay so don't forget that the equation of a circle is of this form x square plus y square plus what 2gx plus what 2fy to be equal to what uh, plus c to be equal to what is equal to what zero Alright, so meaning that any equation that doesn't follow this form is not an equation of a circle. Look at this first equation. This satisfies this equation of a circle. The second equation also satisfies the equation of a circle. Look at this option C. You will see that the coefficient of uh, of of y square 
right not necessarily considering the constant in front of it is actually what is actually negative so since this one is negative that makes it what that makes it not to represent the equation of what of a circle so the correct option here is what is what c you can see that last one proceeded with what with with addition sign and removing the fact that it has constant 3 at the front you can still see that because if i divide both side by 3 you will see that it will actually represent something like of what of this what of this form so you can see that even with no amount no amount of uh of 2 i divided it with uh the option c i will still not remove this negative sign so this does not represent the equation of what the equation of what a circle all right so the correct option here is what c the last question but not the least is what is this they ask us to simplify this expression here you can actually use your calculator directly to simplify this but i would not use my calculator i would try to use my hand here so that means we have five open brackets two minus three minus four then minus two all square okay so let's try to use ped mass ped mass says that you are going to uh evaluate what is inside the bracket uh we are going to evaluate the power first so that means we have 5 uh, minus 3 then minus 2 minus 4 then minus 4 square will give me 4 okay so that means I will have this to be 5 open brackets 2 minus 3 then 4 times 4 will give me what minus 16 right so that, that's that so that means I'm going to have this to be 5 multiplied by 2 minus 3 is what minus 1. Then minus 1 times minus 16 will give me what minus 17. Then multiplying it by 5 will give me what minus 85. Okay, so it's unfortunate that it's unfortunate that what the option, the our answer here is not part of the what it's not part of the option listed above. So um in this case, I will think that you should just pick what you should just pick a okay because this is actually having negative and of course the answer is not part of our option but just to be on the safest side you see you can actually pick a okay but uh from the lms they pick they pick d okay maybe because uh this actually is actually typographical error okay the options here are type is that the answers are wrong or the question here directly here is wrong so any either of those two things would actually have happened so uh thank you very much for taking your time to uh watch this video and if you have any question you can put your question on the uh comments uh section box below so thank you very much and uh, stay tuned and uh, make sure you guys study very well and i wish you success in your exam